Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, Sergeant Guthrie, 909. In service and on the air. This is Sergeant Bruce Guthrie of Unit 99 at Headquarters, Police Department, City of Sacramento, California. My detail is to ride in Unit 99, our tape recorder equipped radio car, and to respond whenever the dispatcher transmits a signal to one of our other units on duty somewhere in the city. At the scene, we make the recordings which we provide for this program. Now, to tell you more about Unit 99, here's our chief, James D. Hicks, Sacramento Police. Unit 99 is a regulation radio patrol unit of the Sacramento Police Department, cruising the streets with a tape recorder. Sergeant Guthrie is on duty and works for your protection, as every police officer does. He can and does make arrests. His orders are to respond to the radio call. You go with him, and what you hear is real. Police, criminals, victims, and witnesses are all real. And whether an arrest is made or the subject released, what happens is real. Make no mistake about that. Now to Unit 99 and Sergeant Bruce Guthrie on duty. Unit 6. Unit 6. 948 and D, Donald. Check 6. Kami 907. 948 is Meet the Citizen. Usually it's a complaint of some kind. We'll check it out. Sleeping, or I guess it's too sleeping on my swing. I heard them cussing and what have you. You know these people, though. Well, he's done a little garden work. Somebody come and do an hour's garden work. That's all I mean. Well, we'll go down and check it out and see what it is. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Well, thanks to you. They have no business coming in my yard and sleeping. That's right. They don't. Hey, fella. Yeah. Wake up. Yeah. Sit up. Sit up. Huh? Sit up. Huh? Sit up. Police officers, fella. Sit up. Come on, get you up on speak your English? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are you doing here, fella? You got any identification on you? I haven't. I just got out of the road camp. You just got out of road camp. What for? Stand up here so I can talk to you. Stand yes, up sir. Here. Yes, sir. I can do that, too. Well, not very well. What have you been drinking? Wine. What'd you get put in road camp for? Wine. You got put in for drinking wine? Yes, sir. That's a habit of his. He drinks wine all the time. Mm -hmm. Spend more time in than you do out. What'd you get the last time? Thirty. Thirty days. How long have you been out now? About five days. You're heading right back again, aren't you? No, I'm not trying to get right back. Listen, I work here. These people give me a break. And you don't appreciate it. You have to come over here and get drunk in their front yard. Thank you, sir. You're you're telling the truth. You are telling the truth. Thank you. Well, why don't you give me a break? We're not going to give you a break. No. You're going to go back to jail where you belong. Oh, please. These people give you a break and you don't appreciate it. Look what you do to them. Why don't you give me a break? Why should we? Because you're honest. That's right. We've known you for a long time. Giving you a break wouldn't help the situation at all. Well? Would it? What are you going to do with him, Morris? I was going to take him down and bag him and drunk in court. Hmm. We, uh... Specific charge is vagrancy and raise the fact he's on private property yeah. in the nighttime, isn't it? Yeah. Violation. Uh, you got anything hanging over your head now? No, I haven't, sir. You're all clean. This hey. last 30 days, the road cap cleaned you up, huh? Yeah. But the idea is. Uh, no, listen, fellas. 
To be honest with you, why don't you give me a break? Well, give us a reason. What have you ever done to deserve a break? How many times have you been in road camp? Oh, uh, how many times have I been? Uh, two or three times. <laughs> you want a break? <laughs> two or three times in the last year, don't you mean? No, not, not, not less than Paulus. To be honest with you, I'm not a road camp tramp. You're not? No, I'm not. Well, to be honest with you, fellow, that's where you're going to be because we're going to take you down and vag you. Well, that's being honest know. with you. You have no well, right on this person's property know. at all. Clark, did you talk to the gentleman that called in? No, you know, I, I didn't talk to him. I talked to the uh, woman that lives at this address, and she said she came home tonight and was very shook up to find this fellow here lying on her couch. And we talked to her a minute ago. She said something about two. Have you checked around? Uh, yes, we checked around the immediate area. We found nothing yet. However, we'll check a little bit further before we do leave to ascertain if there's another man around here. There is little glamour in police work. Most of it is routine and somewhat unpleasant. This road camp tramp who chose the woman's garden to sleep off a drunk is back in the road camp. Kenny 907 to Unit 1. Hi. We got a small boy here, got his arm jammed in the, the prize outlet of a fortune telling machine. How did he get his hand in there, you know? Uh, the, uh, the, another boy worked the machine and the, the uh, reading of the fortune was able to come out, and the boy reached in through the opening to grab it, see if he could find it, and his elbow apparently is caught in underneath in there. He got his arm in there, clear up past the elbow, hasn't he? Maybe we can push, push the machine all the way around and get the back end of it. Watch his hand on the other side, dude. His hand is all right as far as up in yeah, the air. It's just a elbow. Hello there, young fellow. How'd you get your hand in there? Got it stuck. You got it stuck? How'd you do it? Try to get this thing out for the guy. Get that thing away. <laughs> Why? This isn't going to hurt you. Don't turn the elbow just to the left. No, it hurts. I tried it. Just turn the elbow and just lift up just a little. I tried it, but I hurt. Breaking out the back of the fortune telling machine so they can get at the chute where the boy's arm is stuck. Got the back pried off. Yeah, they got it. Do you see anything in there at all? Shoot, put it there now. Is this your little boy? No, it's not my boy. It's mine. It's your boy? <laughs> How old is he? Eight. He's eight years old. Mm -hmm. Certainly got himself into a predicament, hasn't he? I'd say he has. <laughs> Don't cry, sweetie. You're going to have it out in a minute. You're scared. <laughs> you just up. Wait, I think if you raise up a little bit now, see? Put it on my lap. And still Yes, it will. They're going to get it out for you. Sure, they'll have it out of there in no time at all now. They got the back off the machine. I thought he was kidding me, and I said, if you don't get it up until the bus comes, I'll just leave you here. And he says, I'm not kidding. I can't get it out. You go to school, son? What grade are you in? Third. Third grade, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Does it have anything like that? Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, if you just relax, honey, it don't seem so bad, does it? <laughs> the boy that couldn't get his fortune. What do you say? <laughs> huh? You gonna tell him thank you? Huh? That hurt a lot, didn't it? Daryl, can you get away? Don't he say thank you? Uh, 
take and massage his arm mm -hmm. a lot too. That'll help yeah, the will. case of any maybe possible injury to the nerves or anything. Say, did you ever get your fortune out of here? That's the main thing. Yeah, right, baby. <laughs> huh? oh, thank God. Thank God you. Bless all of you. <laughs> I think you will agree that right here, the police made a friend. The young fellow whose arm they released from the fortune-telling machine probably thinks cops are all right. And next time he gets into trouble, he will do what I have so frequently urged everyone to do. Call the police. Unit 2 got a 910 call. It's way out on the east side of town, almost to River Park. We'll see if we can get there in time to catch the action. Hands on the wall, eh? What are you doing out there, Silver, fellow? Huh? Your hands on the wall. Okay. What are you doing out there, anyway? Put your hands down there. Okay. <coughs> Ouch. What are you doing over here in this neighborhood? I got a little gas. I wanted to see my girlfriend. Where's your girlfriend live? Right here. I'm sorry if I caused any embarrassment. I guess we better get the lady out and see if she can identify him. That's so. right. The only thing you can do is she's still out in front. She's still in front. Boy, you she want to fold that off her on the floor? Come on, let's get her out here. What do you think? <laughs> this hour of the night? I don't know. Why didn't you go up the front door? What is there? Man. Just go. Mom, why didn't you tell me it was you? Here's your keys. Oh, excuse me. Where was he? You know this man? Yes, don't. Who is he? I don't want... He's a friend of mine. He's... Why didn't you tell me it was you? I didn't know. In the middle yeah, of the night, did you I know didn't want to cause you any trouble. Well, where's your car? Well, he caused more trouble now, fella, by being out here like this. Why don't you knock on the front door like a gentleman there and tell her who you are? He might have knocked here. I was he across the street at her place. house. Did you call me first? Yeah, I did. I knew you didn't say nothing. I thought... Oh, gee, all this trouble. Why didn't you call me so I'd know it was you? But you make so much trouble for I couldn't help it. I didn't know who it was. We were scared. We were both alone, you know. Without that a bit, under the circumstances. How come you didn't knock on the phone? He, I was across the street. He might have been ringing the doorbell for us. I had just gotten in the house. Well, you've got the whole neighborhood all in the night. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me, boy. I wish I hadn't a call, but I didn't know it was you. Well, you did call us, and we did find the man. Yeah, as long as it I'm turns out all right, well, that's the thing we're interested in. I didn't know who it was. I'm alone. Well, the here. only thing is, in a circumstance of such as these, this man could very easily have gotten shot. He's been drinking. If he'd have jumped over a fence, he's also just no, shot. No, I'm not going to jump over no fence. And you certainly didn't stop when they told you to. They had to speak to you several times before you stopped. Yeah. When you're out in these neighborhoods at this time of the morning, you stay out in the front. Don't get around the backyard. I didn't get around this back. Yeah. He walked in well, boldly. Well, you were in the back there. Yeah, that's you get right. back that's right. How right. come you ducked backyard. down anyway when the officers, uh, when well, Officer Wendell tried right. to come over the fence, you got down on your hands and knees. I was on the corner back there and I saw you. Did I do that? Oh, I don't I'm know. Sorry. I wasn't even there. I was there. I saw you do it. Well, I'm sorry. I don't remember He's that. Not that's the way you get shot in these deals. Yeah. You just started running away, we'd have thrown a bullet at you, I'll tell you that. <laughs> if I'd have known it was him... Well, we're glad that it turned out all right. Well, he probably... I had no sooner gotten over at her house, and I went back, and I thought somebody must have seen me come in alone. And I wasn't in there one minute in the house before I heard this noise, so he might have been ringing the doorbell, you know, first, and then walked around while I... Does he ordinarily go in the backyard when he comes to visit you? Well, if he does, well, I have chimes, see? And if I'm running the water or something, or I can't hear, or if the radio's on, you can't hear, they're in the kitchen. And if I'm in the bedroom or over here, I can't hear the chimes. Mm -hmm. So he has come in the back before, but but whoever it was was bold about it because I heard a clomping, you know. But I thought, well, if it's somebody I knew, they'd call out. And I, I'm being alone. I was scared. I thought somebody watched me come across the street. About a year or two ago, there were prowlers in the corner house over here. Some uh, uh, people, uh, a man peeking in a window. Not him. I mean, <laughs> some man peeking in the window, and they had the police out well, there. we don't blame there. you for being scared. It's your right to call the police department. 
However, if you have people coming to visit you at this time of the morning, it would be a good idea if you make sure who it is. Before well, he don't us. come to visit me this time of the morning. I don't know what he's doing here. He doesn't normally come at this time. Ask no. her. She knows him. Do you know this man also? Yes. He doesn't come at this time. Yeah. He's in this condition. He doesn't know where he's been. Well, that's probably the cause of the whole trouble. Lucky he doesn't have his car. I wouldn't have done it if I'd have known it was him. This young man who chose an unusual hour to call in his girlfriend took a risk I do not recommend when he tried to hide from the officers. If you are ever accosted by an officer and told to halt, obey him. If you are innocent, you have nothing to fear, even under highly suspicious circumstances. If otherwise, questioning and even arrest are to be preferred to a police bullet. Unit one. Car clout? That's the designation we use for petty theft from a car. Hello, Keenan. What do you got here? Uh, there is holding a uh, car clout here. He was in both these cars. Uh, he claims that he was looking at the car, thought it was his. Did you he take got, anything out of him? There was a pair of gloves in one car laying on the sidewalk here. He has gloves on and a flashlight. His possession. Coates, so where's this fellow that you oh, have in the back seat of the car here now? Uh, this fellow observed him uh, in the Buick there. And then a short time later, he looked out and he saw him in uh, this Chevrolet here. Did he take anything out of the cars? No, he didn't. He had a flashlight in his pocket, and he's wearing a pair of black leather gloves. That's all he had on him, huh? Yeah, that's all. Were you the fellow that saw him? Yeah, I saw him. What was he doing when you saw him? Well, first I saw him uh, getting into a Buick, looking into a glove compartment, and uh, he, I saw him with a flashlight, and then later I saw him walk into this other car right here, and then saw him looking into a glove compartment. That's when I got out and went out and got him. Did you see him take anything out of the car? No, I didn't. I just saw him... First I saw him get inside that car, and then he stood in there for a little while, and then he went out and he closed the door, and then he came into this one. And as he was getting something, I came out and picked him up. Could you see what he was doing when he was in the car? Yeah, he was reaching over the glove compartment. That's all I could see. He had the flashlight over his uh, what was I arm. What while I was in the car? Sit back in the seat there, Paul. Well, I want to find out. Sit back in the seat. Get over there. Can you listen to me, please? Listen, I'm just as innocent as anybody else in you know the man? Have you ever seen him before? No, never. Any of these other people see it? No, I don't think so. Well, they would have been out here. Where were you when you saw this? I was right on the town, getting, opening up the window to get mm -hmm. some here. Upstairs in this building here? Yeah. That's where you live? Yeah. Now, what are you doing in this neighborhood here? I'm just walking around. Can I just walk around? What were you doing to? in those cars? I thought this was mine. The one I sold to a guy. Harry, I was just looking at it, and these guys come out, jumping at me. I didn't steal it. Well, how come you're in this neighborhood over here? Can I walk around if I want to? Sure you can walk around, but you don't need to crawl around in this neighborhood here. Have you ever been arrested, fella? No, I ain't been arrested. Where I've do you work? I've never been arrested in my life. I'm not working yet. I'm trying to find me a job. I live with my father. How old are you, anyway? I'm 20. I'll be 20 in October. Where's the last place you worked? The last place I worked? Forestry, I guess. I was in, in, How long ago was that? I was in uh, 53, I guess it was. Was your father supporting you all this time? Yes, sir. You're 20 years old? I'll be 20 in October. You've never been in trouble before? No, sir. What are you wearing the gloves for on a night like this? I'm just wearing them. A warm night just like this wear you're wearing those leather gloves? Sir, I like to wear gloves. You wear them all the time? Yes, sir, all the time. In the daytime or nighttime, I wear gloves. You never been picked up for burglary? No, sir. No. How long have you been in Sacramento? Big pardon? How long have you been in Sacramento? I've been in Sacramento a long time. How long is a long time? Well, I've Down been here you? one year, two years, three years, I don't know. You haven't worked since you've been in town, then? No. Oh, I've worked at the... Yes, I have, too. I worked at Johnson's Restaurant. Uh, 
It's been almost two years ago, and I worked at the country meet. What do you do to pass the time away, then? Nothing. You go to a movie, or... Uh, you used to keeping this uh, late hour? Big pardon? You, are you used to keeping this late of hour? Sure. Mm -hmm. You stroll around the streets late at night like this? Yeah, I walk around all town. I used to walk around at night time, ain't I? Yeah, you're out with no... You don't have any visible means of support, no lawful business in this neighborhood. Your own admission, you haven't worked for two years. That's right. I haven't. I'm looking, though. I'm looking for a job. I've been looking for a job for almost two weeks. Have you taken anything out of those cars? No, of not to our knowledge. I don't steal nothing. These people say that he's been prowling in this neighborhood before. Of course not. They told me that, too. Have you been in this neighborhood before? I've been all over this Sacramento. Why don't you do your looking in the daytime instead of at night? I do it in the daytime and look at night. Can I walk around anytime I want to? No, you don't You don't go into people's car anytime you want I don't to. go into people's cars. Well, they got witnesses that say you were in the car. So it was like mine. Well, so what? I the, thought it was mine. You sold the car that you uh, got rid of your rights to go into that thing. What was your excuse for getting into the thing in the first place, even if it did look like yours? Oh, that's all I was wrong getting into the thing. What are they, what are they going to tell you? Stealing? I'm just mad because everybody gets the wrong idea. Not I know good. you guys got your own, you guys got your job to do. Sure, you pick up a lot of criminals and and uh, all that stuff you say. Right? Sure. Don't you think these people get a little mad when you get in their cars? Go ahead. You like to hear your own voice talk. You go ahead and talk. Please ask, ask you a question. How would you feel if somebody climbed into your car? So what? I'd go up there and ask them what they was doing in there first. I'd give them an explanation. That's what I tried to do with these people here. But no, they had to come out there and grab me and give a, uh, like I stole the son of a gun or something, well, you're out you know? Here just like a crook prowling cars. What are you going to do with them now, Coons? Well, we'll take him over to the station and check and see if he has a record. Go ahead. You see if I have a record. I don't. I mean, I don't worry about that. You're going to book him, I presume. What's the charge? Vagrancy. This lippy young fellow was obviously a phony from the outset. He was charged with vagrancy and sentenced to 30 days in the county jail. Incidentally, he was also AWOL for military service. This is Unit 99. These on-the-scene tape recordings were provided by the Sacramento Police Department and were made on duty by Sergeant Bruce Guthrie in Unit 99. Your host is Chief James V. Hicks of the Sacramento Police Department. Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, 908 coming in. End of tour. Unit 99 has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. 